Hi, everyone. So I left off in the last session saying that the last key critical piece is doing a killer buyer console. Just to recap real fast, the key point here is not to give information, but to set the buyer's expectation through information. You know, this is done by asking questions instead of statements, right? Or by telling stories. It is so much easier for a client to believe you and hear you when you say, do you remember when? Then try to convince them those nerves after making offers normal and they should not withdraw it or that the other side is moving as fast as they can with those inspection issues trying to get contractors in. Do you see what I'm doing here? So <clears throat> if someone won't spend an hour to learn what the process is they're going to be going through over the next month or two, it's only going to make it that much harder. Do you even want to work with that client who's going to fight you every step of the way, drain you so you miss that listing appointment, or do you want to refer them? and just get 20% and not have a headache, 25%, 30%. Typically, I spend 60 to 90 minutes on a buyer consult. I send it beforehand and ask, hey, did you read it? No, it's all good. We'll go over it. Yes, hey, it's all good. I just want to highlight a few key items and answer your questions. What does this say about those behaviors on the disk? I'll give you a hint. The person who read it has a high C, high compliance. Everyone else? Probably didn't. So <clears throat> what's this about, what does this say about those behaviors? You know, well, that person with high compliance could also be stubborn. So watch out for that. You know, is the person a first time buyer or a seasoned pro? Have you ever bought in Colorado? No, okay, it's different than in neighboring states or not neighboring states. You did, great. When did you last buy or sell in Colorado? Okay, hey, just so you know, the contract had major revisions in January and in previous uh, last July. It was 19 pages long. The um, last July revision pushed it to 20 in January, took it to 21. By the way, we're expecting another revision mid-June, July timeframe this year, just so you know. <clears throat> when I started in real estate, by the way, it was somewhere between six to eight pages. I ask how long the contract is when they last bought and sold. I had a client proudly tell me that treat them as a newbie. Their contract was just under one and a half pages typed by an attorney. This is what you want to hear. You want your clients to know you're the expert. You are up to speed with all the changes that are coming around. They can trust you. How much easier do you think that transaction was because of this versus the client operating with outdated instructions if they even remembered what they were from 20, 30, 40 years ago? If someone just wants you to open a door and doesn't want to hire you, ask them if they've been trained in real estate law. If they ask, tell them that FISBOs typically face litigation for doing something wrong with the contract, and they're three times more likely to get sued than if they used a professional like yourself. Ask if they know good inspectors, how to negotiate issues, what's customary and reasonable asks for their inspections, what aren't. Most importantly, what's their mitigation plans when things get emotional? Did you know most homeowners only sell a property roughly three times in their lifetime? Do you really wanna practice with your most expensive asset on something you're only going to do two more times. You know, as I said, most good realtors do this in a quarter, a month, or even a week. <clears throat> so, oh, by the way, Mr. Fisbo, you want to go for yourself? Yeah, you might get it for 9% less. Congratulations. But do you know why the trend of the number of for sale by owners is decreasing in the United States and has been since 1980? I'll give you a hint the buyer ends up paying more. We're talking tens of thousands more in repairs. Did you know you need to get your sewer inspected or who to call to get it done? Or what about looking for hail damage on your roof? This is really expensive stuff, guys. That's part of your value proposition. So <clears throat> how many people use canned responses in their CRM or even in their email system? Did you know that's included free in Gmail, right? So the whole point, if you are going to send 
a single text or email more than one time, it really needs to be a canned response. I had a doctor client wrote a long, beautiful email about what to expect for inspectors. I started cutting and pasting the whole thing, only changing the dates. Then I had a hard time starting to find it after a while. So, you know, canned response. Now I say the same thing to my client every time, never running foul of any fair housing rules. Most importantly, not forgetting anything. So it saves you time, yeah, but it also saves your bacon. After the buyer intake form, I have a kind response in my Gmail account. This way, every client is treated the same. Most importantly, I never forget to include something. Notice I just repeated that. It's important. So what's in this? I send an example contract, the buyer agency agreement, the working relationships, the affiliated buyer, uh, oh, sorry, affiliated business agreement, wire fraud agreements. All this goes along with my buyer console packet. You know, working relationships are not required here in Colorado. Why do I send it? Well, what better way to describe what my job is versus the listing agent than using a state standard form that they have to sign? Now, in New Jersey, where I initially got licensed, this and got into this habit, by the way, this is required. I got so good at doing this that cutting it out, I was actually doing a disservice to my client. So I put it back in. This is really important, guys. The client is looking at it. They're understanding. As a buyer's agent, my job is to get them ho their home for the least amount of money possible. Listing agents to get the most. This is why you don't go to the listing agent. Oh, and by the way, when there's multiple bids, my job is to get you your best chance of getting the home and beating out all the other bids. The listing agent, their job is to sell the home. Notice the disconnect. This is why you want to hire me. That's part of your value proposition. Use it. This is huge. Now, all these forms, they're numbered in a folder. Click, copy, paste, dump, send. That simple. I've said it before. Going to say it again. The script is make sure your client knows they have to sign the buyer agency agreement in order to hire you. Super, super important. Make sure that's in your canned response. Now, I used to take clients out once if they were hesitant, especially some of those engineers because they are a high SC and in disk speak, SCs are scaredy cats. They need data to make a decision. Some of you are rolling your eyes right now. You've dealt with engineers and you know, bury them in data, send them comps, send them recent solds in the neighborhood, get them an idea of what's going on. This is how they make a decision. Now for them hiring you, they just met you. They don't know if you yet really can be trusted, if you know your collective stuff. Where's the data that you really know your collective stuff? I mean, seriously, there's a reason why real estate agents are generally looked upon with the same respect as litigation attorneys and used car salesmen. After mid-July, you are going to need to overcome that scaredy cat. Easy way is, this is now law. You might have heard that in the previous session. If you don't like working with me, hey, you can cancel any time with three days written notice. But I sure hope you have the courtesy to have a discussion with me if it's not working out before you hire me. By the way, that right there is setting expectations. So know your stuff inside and out. Be confident. Don't make anything up. And tell them you don't know it all because nobody does. It's always changing. Gee, where have I heard that before? And no two deals are the same, even if you're selling the same home one year later. Because you've got different inspectors, different buyers. It's going to be different. So tell them you don't know something and then go get the answer. Do you know the age of the furnace on the third showing you're going to? Do you think you need to? Oh, by the way, is it in this year's flood zones? And when did the flood zones last change? My favorite question I got from a client was, how much will it cost to cut the grass? I don't know. I'm in Colorado. It probably costs more to water it than cut it. Well, how much will it cost to water it? Well, what did I do? I went and texted the listing agent who went and texted her clients, who then texted me back with the answer that I gave to my clients. That's the point. I knew where to go to get the answer. So the point is, even if you're only showing one house, there is too much to know it all. 
You just have to know where the info is and get it to your client. Now, quick side story. I picked my undergrad because of a single piece of collateral they sent me. It's a little three by five black and white postcard with a picture of a kindergarten class on the front with the headline, you can't know it all. Flip it over and then it talks about how you're not gonna be a number, best libraries double every four years. I mean, this was early nineties, but you get the point. You're there, they are there to help me through the system and figure it out. That's what you are for your client. So there's a phrase, I'm sure you all have heard it, fake it till you make it. I personally like practice it till you don't have to fake it. Not as catchy, but you get the idea. Do you lack confidence? What do you need to do to get confident? You know, you might've heard this in the last session. Is it role play? Is it knowing stats? You know, as the Nike commercial says, just do it. As in prep to get confident, know your stuff. Another key thing, super important, here's the script. I know a lot of you have said this. I used to say this myself. Don't write this one down. I want you to be comfortable with this decision to buy this home. Don't say that because many agents don't get, sorry, many buyers don't get comfortable even at closing with the idea of being hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and not knowing how to care and feed their home. Now, <clears throat> what happens here? Going back to disk speak, since, as I said, I speak disk and engineered, they're just other languages, kind of like Italian, German, but that's the point of the disk. Those SCs, those engineers, those accountants, they need data. So provide the data. Last solds, comps in the neighborhood, they need school data. Get it from another source, like Great Grades or US News and World Report. Homes.com has that all aggregated. They also have crime stats. I never give out crime stats, and I've only been asked about that once. If you've noticed, I've said it's all good versus no worries. Why? Double po uh, it's positive versus double negative. For me personally, it's for my own mindset. Now, top Ds, executive summary. You want to keep it simple. You want bullet points, and you want next steps. For my Ds out there, here's my two favorite scripts for them. This is the house you told me you wanted to buy, assuming it actually is. And the other one is, I got your back. It's all they need to hear. That's all they want. They don't want details. They just want to know it's being dealt with. So people generally will respect that you don't work all the time, especially here in Colorado. I will tell them during the buyer consult, I work from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'll always get back to them in 24 hours via email. If I'm out, I will have some amazing coverage that will take care of them and satisfy all their needs. I'll tell my clients I will never text or talk with them after I've had a drink because, well, drunk texting is bad. A lot of times I get a giggle from that. <clears throat> Here's a super important line. This is my script. Take out a pen, write it down. I typically only show clients five to eight homes before they decide which one they want to buy, and I show the best homes first. That's it. It's not written down anywhere in my buyer consult package, but I say that. Why? <clears throat> because it sets expectations. Now, I typically show them even fewer. Some of those engineer types, those SCs, I'll add a little piece on. Do new homes come on the market? Yeah, all the time. Why do I throw that in there? Because if I see in their eyes, they're starting to get nervous. Oh my God, I've been looking. I haven't seen anything I like. I want to reassure them that their, their best option hasn't passed them by yet. Now, there's more tricks to this. You can get deeper, you can go further, you can expand your search area, increase price, decrease the size home you're looking for. There's a whole bunch of things you can do to make this work for your clients, but you need to know what they're looking for, which is the whole point of doing the LP Mama or the Biff earlier. You know what's important to them. You see how this is starting to loop together now and how that recipe is starting to actually go from dry ingredients and wet ingredients to a dough to something that might be actually tasty to eat. That's the point. So where are we going next? Well, next in my buyer consult, I have a 14 point process. This is the steps of what happens when you're buying a home. 
I congratulate my clients for taking steps one and two done because they're probably already pre-qualified and they've already been searching. When I get down to the next to last step, which is close, I tell them I only get paid at closing. Why? Well, transparency equals comfort. I may bring out the buyer agency here if they have a question. I will definitely do it on the next side of my buyer consult. <clears throat> now, where am I going with this? Our past president, Dave Knorr, called this rubbing salt in the wound so that they will grab the life preserver that you throw for them. I prefer calling it setting expectations so that when they get there and they are absolutely freaking out, I can say, do you remember when? And then they calm down and carry on. You might remember me mentioning that in that previous session. Here it is. I will tell them I will ask them the same questions over and over again, not because I forgot the answer, but because the process can be iterative. As I've said before, this is likely one of the largest purchases of their lives in a very big deal. They may think they need a big yard, but in reality, they realize that having a small yard and a park nearby or back or backing into open space is actually more preferable. <clears throat> so remember transparency equals comfort. This is where I bring out the buyer agency agreement. This is the big finale, guys. This is why you're sitting here and listening to me ramble. So I typically bring this out when I'm talking about going through the house hunting guidelines on my buyer consult. I go through our six page buyer agency agree with meant with them. This is a state standard form. If you don't have one, you might want to talk to an attorney and get one or talk to your broker and have one drafted for your area. Most important on this page three, it highlights how I'm getting paid. My commission is negotiable. I charge a 2.8% success fee on the buyer side. The seller may pay my professional fees for bringing a buyer. That means I work for you, but you might not have to pay for my expertise unless you choose to buy or see and buy a home that is less than 2.8%. Then you need to make up the difference. The choice is solely yours on what you want to see, assuming it's available. As of July, just so you know, I may need to call the listing agent and ask them. Then be quiet. Take out a pen, put it on the form, slide it over to them. I recently heard someone say they sing the alphabet song in their head five times if they need to, but keep your trap shut. I know this is going to be hard for high eyes. I know because I am one. So take your pen out, write this down. This is my script. This is the transition. When you go to an open house and sign in, all the agents will ask you to. They are then going to ask them based on your state to hire you if you don't have representation. You know, when you hire me, Here's the script. When you hire me, you can put my name down as the agent who is representing you. And generally, you'll not get any more of those nonstop and annoying calls and emails. Great. I don't want to be annoyed. Perfect. I can also get you all the information on those homes that might be interesting that you drive past. This is how you hire me. So you don't miss your next dream home. That's my script but I hear that you don't have a similar one in your state. Okay, talk to your broker, talk to an attorney. You know, personally, I'd go hire a real estate attorney to draft one if one doesn't exist. It may cost you a tiny bit. They'll be a lot cheaper than not getting paid the first time. In my buyer agency agreement, in my packet, I have a slide on the Realtor Code of Ethics. Boring, I know, but the point is, this is what I do for my clients. It's called the nine essential responsibilities of your realtor. It has 10 bullet points on it on purpose. You know, we're not talking about earth shattering ideas here. It's understanding your client goals, which we've already done, advocating for them, keeping them informed, being skilled in knowing the market. This is basic stuff, guys. Um, that you're a fiduciary, which means you hold their important, hold, treat their money better than you would treat your own. You hold it to a higher standard. Now, it's their interests are put ahead of yours. I One of my scripts I got from someone else, I will come up with a custom home buying plan that is designed to meet your needs. Not really earth shattering. That's the whole point of why you're there. <clears throat> For D's, I don't go through all this. All I say is, I got your back. Remember that script? So I explain multiple offers. What was the market like? What's it currently doing? How's it shifting around? By the way, 
I generally speak in specific terms for what the client is looking for. If they're looking at a $500,000 condo, I don't mention anything about single family homes. And by the way, the condo market is moving very differently than single family homes are right now. So you better know that in your market and tell your clients. You may hear this is happening in the market. In reality, you're not buying that type of home. This is what you're buying, right? Or turn it into a question. Hey, what type of home are you buying? You get the idea. Now, what I'm about to say is going to freak a lot of people out. I do the math. The execs, those DCs, the numbers people, high Cs, the accountants, they want numbers. This is where they become your friend. Now, a couple of weeks ago, rates were 6.5%. Great. You know the extra $10,000 on your home that we're talking about right now? That will cost you $2.10 in today's rates. You know, back when it was 3%, that was a buck 40, guys. Yeah, I have that written down as a note. I don't do this on the fly. Now, what can you buy for an extra $2.10 today? You know, your daily Starbucks, $5.26, that will set you back and get, be able to get you an extra $25,000 on your purchase price on your loan. So I customized this beforehand to help them with their scenario. They get the idea. I have a slide that has all the estimated costs based on what they're looking for buying, things like title, inspection, PMI, mortgage rates, interest due on the loan, and my success rate. You know, the last couple of pages I have, it's the propaganda and team. That's my actual script. I call it propaganda. Here's my raving fans. People laugh at that. But you know what? Really impressive when there's two pages of it. And if you're saying, oh, but I'm brand new, who's on your team? Is it a broker? Can you use some of their reviews? Are you on a team? Can you use some of your team lead reviews? You get the idea. So <clears throat> who's on your trusted team? Inspectors, contractors, radon mitigators, roofers. You get the idea. It, it can be huge, guys. It doesn't just have to be a part-time VA, which, by the way, we have on our um, team list. So I had a client ask how many homes I've sold. My response wasn't a number. I knew the client. It was many. Did he ask what the number was? No, I was done. That's the point. When people ask, how's the internet here? They don't want an in-depth explanation of how packets move around, which is what I used to give them. All they want to hear is, seems to be working well. There you go. So I end with next steps. If they didn't hire me earlier in the buyer consult, I will try again and let the silence do the heavy lifting. Now, if they don't sign or aren't comfortable, I put my hand on the contract and I start sliding it towards me. While I'm doing that, I say, it's all good. You don't know me yet and I don't really know you yet. This whole process can be confusing and very uncomfortable. My job is to make you as comfortable as possible and to make it as easy as possible. Just so you know, I will only take clients out once before they have to sign the buyer agency agreement to hire me. I can still do that in Colorado. Other states, you might say, I can't legally show you a home until you hire me. That's the law. You know, and if we're not a good match, that's okay. We can part ways. You wouldn't want to spend a week or a month at work only to have your boss tell you that they like you, but you're not getting paid because sales took their budget. This is like that. And I use that phrase a lot. Most if they don't sign the first time, we'll sign on the hood after that first showing if you ask. So I only have another minute left. I'm going to wrap this up. Really important thing. I got this from a local Colorado attorney. I also got it from corporate at EXP. Now, I am not an attorney, nor do I play one on TV, so I highly, highly suggest that you reach out to your state broker or an attorney before you put something like this into your contract. The seller is to credit the buyer X at closing to satisfy contractual agreement with buyer broker. Or it could say the buyer is to pay the buyer broker X amount to satisfy contractual agreement, depending on what you've entered into. So now you have the full ingredient list, a complete recipe. Are you going to try to practice this at a massive family gathering or annual block party? 
Or would you want to practice it first so you can perfect it and have a do-over if you need it? So just so you know, guys, I am going to be on the big agent meeting in two days time this Friday. Love to see you there. Bring your questions. Thanks so much. Have a great day.